my last rendezvous, we met the Nawab of Bhutodi. This week, he's joined by his glamorous bigam, Sharmila Tagore. Actress, wife, mother, Rinku has excelled in all her roles. We go back a long way. So it was with delightful anticipation that I caught up with both of them to talk, to share, to rediscover the persons we've become. Sharmila and Tiger Patodi. Rinku, it's so good to have you here, both of you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for calling us. You know, it's ages since we all sat down and chatted. Sure. Right? And it's, it's like a lifetime has gone by, hasn't it? Life has become very sort of, you know, fast and it's not like it used to be for me. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. You had more leisure, I think. But tell me, Rinku, when you look back at that young girl joining Hindi films, how do you see her? What was she like? Well, frankly, to me, it, sometimes it feels it was somebody else. Does it? Yes. Very young. Um, terribly sure about lots of things, which now I feel that she perhaps wasn't so sure. And I am surprised that uh, things worked out well for her. And she made many mistakes, but she always landed on her feet. Would you say you were a bit of a rebel for those times? Yes, that's how people have projected me, haven't they? Yes. Looking back, what do you feel? I was 17. I had to shoot in uh, Bombay. So I was staying in a hotel mm. alone. So I guess that was, um, you know, nobody did that before. It, uh, mm. People didn't know how to react to that. They didn't know how to gauge me. I remember in Kashmir, Robert, dance master, asked me for a dance, and I danced. Now, those days, that sort of thing, didn't happen. So I was told that heroines don't dance. Heroines uh, dress in a certain manner. Um, heroines don't do a lot of things that normal other people, all my friends were doing, which I thought uh, was very inhibiting. I didn't want to be only an actress. I wanted to be my own age. And to me, to enjoy myself, to have fun, to, to have freedom, I mean, all that was much more, it was important. But would you say you were a creature of instinct and impulse? I think so. I've always been very impulsive, very headstrong, very stubborn. I remember Rishikesh Mukherjee coming and telling me uh, when I was shooting in Anupama, Rinku, you've got a lovely face. We are giving you a beautiful backlight. I mean, can you just do something about your hair? Well, what was wrong with the hair? You know, the bouffant. The bouffant, but that was fashionable in those days. Yes, but uh, I think uh, Rishida knew what he was talking about. Mm. He, he knew that I'd look so much better and more the character. But I was, Wouldn't so, accept it. I was so stubborn. I said, well, what do they know? I'm looking <laughs> all right. <laughs> and now I just feel, can, can I sort of change it? Maybe the computers mm. or something. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. It, that's what I'm saying, that it's all recorded and For it's there. That's right. When do, you, when do you feel you took charge of your life, so to speak? Um, when I came into it. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I, have to, I have to give the credit to Tiger, I think, yes. Mansu, before you met Rinku, what did the name Sharmila Tugor mean to you? <laughs> Nothing. How can that be? He, had, he knew only Vajanti Mala and Meena Kumari. Knew all, knew all of them, yes. Had you seen any of the films? No. <laughs> and I, 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 even after we met and we went go, going around together, we got he went engaged, to see married, Mere went. Hamdam Mere Dost, and he walked out with it. When did you walk out? Some song or the other. Hmm? Well, I wasn't fond of him. I still am. I, I don't. I don't enjoy them. But he sees much. all of Seth's films now. See, that's. Hmm. Yeah, I do. Just, <laughs> just, just, just <laughs> see. <laughs> just, uh, yeah. But you watched him play cricket. Yes. Yes. I've I've been uh, very fond of cricket without understanding very much about cricket. So I, but I was a Jaisima fan. 
Okay, <laughs> sorry yeah. about that one too. <laughs> it's okay with me. <laughs> you know yes. something? I've never asked you both how you actually met. I remember a time when you didn't know each other, and then two weeks later, you were inseparable. Yeah. So I want to know how did the actual meeting take place? We Ask him, let's see whether he remembers or not. There were a couple living here, Rinku was staying with them. And I remember I, I rang her up, I got her number from somewhere and said, I've brought something for you from England. And had you really? No. Oh, to lie. <laughs> he actually left a message that he had brought five fridges. Because I was very intrigued. <laughs> I mean, who would send me five fridges? OK. So she rang back, and I said, well, you know, what's happening this evening? And she said, nothing. So I said, let's meet. And that's how we met. Well, I had met him once uh, in Calcutta earlier. And then I was in uh, Delhi. And he had just scored that 200 runs against England, was it? And I wanted to show off and I wanted to tell everybody that I knew the Nawab of Patoli. So I found out his telephone number and rang him up and left a message saying congratulations. And, hmm? no? no, I never got the message. So then why did you ring me up? Lots of reasons why I rang you up. How did you know that she was staying there? Oh, how did I know you were staying there? Well, you told me because I, I had think, left I, that I message. Think, yeah, maybe that's right, yes. Mm. I, I, I don't see how I could have got the number unless she left it. So she's the one who's responsible for all this, you know, not me. Plotting and planning yes, again. Yes, obviously. <laughs> but you know, you both are sitting here very sober, very sedate, very elegant. But I remember a time when you used to do crazy <laughs> things, all in the name of love, Rinku. Really? <laughs> remind me, or don't remind me. You know, I, I remember doing crazy things. Went everywhere. Followed each other and everything. Around the world? Yes. But you used to also take time off from cricket, broken finger or something, and then landed no, up I in Paris. My I broke my finger. He did. Very and conveniently. I'm sure you broke it. <laughs> no. It was very painful. But very and convenient. Well, <laughs> all right, if you say so. <laughs> but uh, that gave me three or four weeks off, so I went off to Paris. Yeah, we were shooting for an evening in Paris. But Rick, could you remember once, I think you were seeing him off at the airport. He was going to Ahmedabad. <laughs> yes. I was shooting in Panvel. And, um, and Tiger was going to Ahmedabad. And I said, let me go to the airport to say bye to him. And I made my driver drive, like, you know, all fast. And I came to the airport. And he was just getting out of the car with Raj Singh. So I made it. And then uh, I said, bye. And he says, well, what are you doing? And he said, why don't you come? And, and I went. I didn't have any clothes. I didn't have, I just. That's what I mean. Yeah. Much, much in love, you see. All the time. I mean, you know, we just did impulsive things. But it all that had to stop when Seth arrived, you see. And but I'm sure you must have got married before Seth arrived. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Just, just about. <laughs> just about, yes. Yeah. Two so, years before Seth arrived. So when did you ever propose to me or anything? But did you not propose to me? I don't remember proposing to What you. he did was we went home, met Amma. And there he announced, he told Amma that Rinku and I have decided to get married. I mean, he didn't tell me, but he told Amma <laughs> in front of me. Didn't go down on his knees? No, I think he did later. <laughs> I've been <laughs> down on my knees ever since, Jimmy. Come on, dear. Yes, I, I think I did. I insisted that he officially propose. So we were, uh, we were in Paris together. And it was such a wonderful day. You know, so we walked and walked and went to various places. I think I said, now you propose. So he knelt and oh, you did? said all the right so, things. I can't remember, seriously. You know, I have a very selective memory about this. Very retentive, <laughs> yes. Uh, this was, and this was on the street. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, for a man known never to display emotion, it's quite something to get it to kneel on the street. And in Paris, with the drive on the wrong side, I could have been run over. <laughs> very easily. No, I think it was just that. That day, it was so beautiful. What a wonderful sight. I mean, everybody enjoying themselves. The sight of him kneeling? <laughs> that too. <laughs> that too.
you were always seen as a very successful actress. You also had this glamorous sex symbol image to an extent. You married into a somewhat conservative Muslim princely family. What was the transition like from Sharmila Tagore to the Begum of Patauti? It was very gradual, I think. Mm. It was very gradual because when I got married in 68, I felt it was a little pretentious for me to call, not pretentious, I don't know what the word is, but not quite right for me to call myself Begum of Patauti at that stage. So, you know, there, there was a kind of an identity crisis, perhaps. And we went to live in Delhi in 1984. I think slowly the, as you say, the Begum of Patauti yes. bit happened then. But now I'm quite happily Begum of Patauti and Sharmila Tago. You changed your religion, didn't you? Yeah. H how did you feel about it, personally? It wasn't easy, nor was it very difficult. It had to be uh, faced and understood. Mm -hmm. You couldn't be very flippant about it. Uh, before that, I wasn't terribly religious. Mm -hmm. um, now I think I know more about Hinduism and Islam. Mm -hmm. You were rechristened Aisha? Yes. Who thought of this name? Tiger. I did. It's a lovely name. So my favorite has always been uh, Aisha Gachi Devi. Yes. Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> Your mother-in-law, the Begum of Bhopal, has always know, been known to be a very strong personality. Were you ever intimidated by her? <laughs> I don't think so. I think, uh, in fact, the first time I met Amma, I was, of course, very nervous. She asked me, what do you think about my son? I said, well, I like him. And she said, well, uh, what do you intend to do? And I told her, I don't know yet. I've just met him. I, I don't know. I just, I'm very fond of him. But at this point, you know him longer. Mm -hmm. You have known him longer. I was very much myself uh, with my nervousness or with my uh, fumblings or whatever. So I think that truth or that honesty came across. Mm -hmm. And I think we had a very uh, healthy, mutual respect for each other. I always believe in a marriage, there's, there's an overlapping of influence when you're close to somebody. In what ways has being with Mansoor changed you? I think I was quite uh, wild. I was uh, a bit confused. I met him, I think, when he was 23. And he was still um, like this. He was very matured and he had a wonderful sense of humor. He, he was decisive. and. And uh, while I think I was very bookish, you know, and I was not terribly weird, I was perhaps phony or a little false, perhaps, you know, always trying to um, quote somebody else, for instance, and, and not perhaps have enough confidence to be myself. And now I, I am what I am, and it's okay to be. I think I learned that from him. Otherwise, I was perhaps trying too hard. Maybe. Hmm? I don't know. I, I think I think <laughs> I, um, the way I have changed to some extent or in, been influenced is the. You see, we I never worked for a living. Um, I was born at that time when it was necessary for certain members from a particular background to work for a living, and money was not a problem till later. So I learned from her that you know that work is actually something that sh is done i mean should be done and it's not something that should be avoided and that it is not only pleasurable but it gives you a certain amount of self-confidence real self-confidence this is this is this is the one lesson i think she taught me um otherwise i've taught her most things <laughs> <laughs> including uh, including uh, ghazals i didn't understand urdu very well so suddenly I started listening to all these things without understanding very much. And then he came and told me that I've written this wonderful poem. I mean, I've written this poem for you. And uh, what was it, Tara? I, I, it was a quote no, from say, Ghalib. Say, no, well, so we'll spoil the, the story now. No, 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 it was a straight quote from Ghalib. She hadn't got a clue who it was. She thought I'd written it. <laughs> but I've forgotten what the quote uh, was. Yeah, tell me what happened. What happened? So anyway, he came and told me that he's written this poem for me. I said, what is it? So he said, Dile nada tujhe hua kya hai. And of course, I was very thrilled. And I said, you know, Tiger's written this thing for me. And I was shooting with Feroz Khan. God, no. And uh, for supper. <laughs> and I said, you know, Tiger's written this beautiful thing for me. And he said, yeah, what? So I told him. So he just looked at me. <laughs> he said, you, you stupid woman. 
So did you have any problem about wrinkles working? No, not really. I didn't have much of a hassle. Were there times when you said, oh God, why is she working? I wish she was here. Uh, why she's working? Yes. Why she's working in films? Never. I think he respected women, you know, and hmm. he didn't ever want to want me to stay up waiting dinner for him. Okay. Or he didn't want me to pack for him. Or, and I remember when I went to Pakistan for the first time, they could not understand that how could the Nawab of Patodi allow his wife, I mean, he, it, it's understood that he could have married a film actress, mm. but how did he allow his wife mm. to continue acting? They just couldn't understand that. Well, I met her when she was an actress. I mean, she was just carrying on what she was doing before I met her. When I was marrying Tiger, I got a lot of advice. Such uh, as what? 
Well, Tiger's friend said, don't marry a film actress, it'll never last, you know. And mm -hmm. I was told that don't marry a Nawab, you know, you know. Right. Well, <laughs> they just sort of... You're quite right, yes. You know? What is the reason? And I am the only, only person, in <laughs> fact, then when I wanted to give up uh, films after getting married, everybody said, uh, no, no, you mustn't give up film, you'll corrode inside. Mm -hmm. One actress told me that, oh, well, then he'll, he'll get bored with you and then he'll do whatever he wants to do and then what will you do? Don't, yeah. Can you imagine? Rinku, way back in the 60s, as we discussed earlier, you were one of the first actresses with freedom. Today, as we're going towards the new millennium, would you give that same freedom to your daughters? Um, yes, you know, Sunny, I will. If they wanted to be I, actresses? They can do whatever they want. Really? Because I trust them implicitly. You can't control children. They have to grow up. They have to form their own identity. And they have to break away from you mm. in order to do so. Otherwise, they'll, they'll always be subdued and controlled by you. True. Uh, so that is why most children sometimes go through that little, um, you know, define one's parents. It, they need to do that. When Seth married Amrita at the age of 21, without telling you, how did you feel? Well, yes, it was a very hurtful experience then. Mm -hmm. But then it's uh, water under the bridge now. Certainly. But why did he, why do you feel he didn't tell you? I think, he, I think, uh, uh, Simi, he was a bit scared uh, of coming out with it, uh, so he decided to get it over with, and uh, then then come and tell us. Present you with the fate account. I think he was very young and uh, confused, but I think he did the right thing. What kind of a mother-in-law are you, Rinku? <laughs> You'll have to ask my daughter. <laughs> I will. Would you um, tell me? <laughs> I think I'm all right. I think I I like her, so it's not difficult. It's. Uh, more as a friend, more as a... I feel um, a mother should be a mother. You know, this mother-in-law is a very uh, difficult relationship, perhaps. I, I find myself being very spontaneous with her, with Amrita and with Seth. I don't get any vibes that they are, um, you know, they don't like me or anything. No, so sure. I think it's all right. So tell me, after 31 years of marriage, what is a relationship? What makes it work? <laughs> well, I can assure you that they're not made in heaven. Mm. Um, they're very much made on earth, and uh, it, it needs a bit of adjustment. At certain times, uh, you ought to compromise. It takes hard work and time. It's like anything else. If you want, I, I mean, I, I can't even take it for granted now. You need a lot of tact. Mm. You, 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 of course, have to be truthful in your mm. marriage, but you can't uh, say truth at the cost of hurting each other, you know. Like I might say, Sunil Gavaskar is a better player. You yes, know. No, a, I mean, yes, but I don't think I can tell Tiger that day in and day out. You have to be careful, careful, careful yeah. not to hurt. Or sensitive, sensitive yes. to mm. each other. True. Because if you go at each other, then nothing will be, nothing will remain. Okay, tell me, any dreams left, both of you? Lots. Don't you have any dreams? You start. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, then they won't come true. Yes, you're always <laughs> always scared of these things, you know? You always hold yeah. back and you don't dwell on happiness either. Yes, you know, I could never watch Tiger play cricket, for instance. When he was playing, I would uh, get very superstitious and I'd close my eyes and I'd go away. And It didn't help at all, Ringo. Yeah. <laughs> it made no difference. And now in Seth's films, you know, I, I feel very, very much like that. So I can't be very detached from something that I'm very involved with. Okay, Mansoor, any dreams left? No, no. I, my dream is to uh, live the rest of how many years I've got with a reasonably healthy and a reasonably wealthy and a reasonably happy life. Touch wood. <laughs> <laughs> and believe me, from my heart, I wish the thank same thing. Thank you very much. <laughs> I want to thank you both so much for coming over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this, Roderick. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>